it is actually almost here, subhanAllah. I feel like Ramadan just comes by quicker and quicker every year. It does not feel like 11 months since the last Ramadan. But if you clicked on this video, I know that you care about yourself. You don't want to waste this Ramadan. You don't want it to have just come and gone and nothing really changed. Maybe you wasted the last one or maybe you just don't know the importance of Ramadan to begin with, but something in you wants to change and that's why you're here. Growing up, I honestly didn't really look forward to Ramadan. In fact, I kind of dreaded when it would come. For me, I looked at Ramadan as 30 days where I was going to be starving and exhausted and have to go to the masjid with Baba at night and stand in prayer. It wasn't really something I looked forward to until, and I will never forget this day, I'm walking in the halls in school on the first day of Ramadan and you know, I'm upset, I'm already hungry and I see one of my friends and he looks so happy and excited. Like he's pretty much jumping with joy. So I go to him obviously and I ask, what's got you, what happened? Like, why are you so excited? He's like, what do you mean? Dude, it's the first day of Ramadan. How could I not be excited? And I'm there thinking, subhanAllah, that is the same reason why I'm in a bad mood. And seeing him so excited, plus learning about some of the incredible benefits of Ramadan got me really excited as well. And ever since then, I've looked forward to Ramadan every year. And inshallah, the goal of this video is to get you excited as well. The whole purpose of Ramadan is to achieve this sense of taqwa or God consciousness. Allah tells us in the Quran, Kutiba alaykum usliyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqu. That fasting has been prescribed for you just like it's been prescribed for those before you so that you may achieve taqwa, that you may achieve God consciousness. Because if I'm alone in my room, for example, right, nobody is going to know if I decide to take a sip of water or to eat something really quickly. But I know that Allah is watching. And so because of that, I refrain myself. And doing that consistently for 30 days builds piety and it translates to other aspects of your life. So if an opportunity comes to look at something haram, I decide to lower my gaze because I've built that God consciousness and those repeated acts of piety end up leading to this closeness to Allah. And that closeness to Allah leads to this feeling of peace that you really can't describe. You only know it if you felt it before. Everything could be going wrong in your life, but internally you're unshaken because you just trust in Allah. You have that connection connection now where you know that Allah is going to take care of you. One of my favorite quotes is by Abu Hanifa where he says that if the kings and the royals knew of the happiness and richness that we were in, they would send their armies with their swords to take it from us. And the interesting thing here is that this richness that he's talking about, I mean, th these are desert Bedouin Arabs. They do not have money, right? This richness is that connection to Allah, that peace that you feel. Having that is more valuable than anything that this dunya can contain. And honestly, you see it with a lot of the royalty and the kings and the celebrities of our time. They can have all the money in this world, but you find that they're addicted to drugs or they're depressed because there's this fundamental core aspect inside of them that's missing. And that is a connection to God. That peace isn't there. That it is only in the remembrance of Allah that hearts find rest. Ramadan is a month where the doors of Jannah are open and the doors of hellfire are closed. It is a chance for you to be permanently banned from hellfire, never to enter it. Because the Prophet, peace be upon him, tells us that every single night in Ramadan, Allah handpicks a group of his servants and says, hellfire has been made haram. On you. So every single night in Ramadan is a chance for you to be banned from hellfire. It's also a chance for you to be forgiven of all your sins. The Prophet Sallallahu tells us that whoever fasts Ramadan with faith and expecting reward, he will be forgiven of all of his sins. Ramadan really is your opportunity to focus on your ibadah for 30 days and to make ourselves better people. Think of Ramadan as your sort of boot camp or training ground, right? If you have two separate people, one of them is used to training outside every single day, whether there's rain, snow, shine, he is out there, he's putting in the work. And then the second guy is used to going in to work in his room temperature office with his suit and his cup of coffee sitting at his desk. If you were to take both of those people and throw them out into the rain, right? Who is going to suffer more? Who is going to be better off, right? The first person is already used to those conditions because he trains in those kind of conditions every single day. So he is not going to suffer at all. While the second person is going to find it miserable because he's been pampered, right? His conditions are very easy. So in these 30 days of Ramadan where you are pushing yourself, you're fasting, you're reading Quran, you're going to the masjid. Well, then now you kind of get used to doing that much. And so what Allah asks 
asks for outside of Ramadan is so much less than that. So now you're already kind of used to it and it's easier. You have been able to train your nafs to submit. And that is the main focus in Ramadan. We want to train our nafs. Personally, if you've seen my other videos, I'm a huge advocate of you know going to the gym, keeping your body healthy. But in these 30 days of Ramadan, I do not go to the gym at all because that is not the focus, right? Those two hours that I could spend in the gym, I could and I should be spending them reading Quran, right? Doing something that, that'll lead to more benefit and more reward in Ramadan. So that really is the priority. We want to get closer to Allah. And those are some of the benefits that you will get from this month, but you are not going to have them if you don't prepare accordingly from now. You can't keep the same sort of habits and lifestyles and then just expect all of a sudden on day one to just flip a switch. And now you're just super sheikh mode, you know, you're dialed in. That's not how it works. We're gonna focus on five things that you can start from now that'll help you prepare and make the most out of Ramadan. The first and most important one is to get rid of bad habits. I feel like this is probably the least talked about, but it is the most important because, you know, all of the deeds that you do in Ramadan are great, right? You're fasting, you're praying, you're reading Quran, you're making extra dua. But then if you have these sinful habits that you carry into Ramadan, right? You're listening to music, you don't properly lower your gaze, you curse. It's going to spoil the deeds that you do and it might ruin the reward that you would have gotten from Ramadan. One big misconception is that we think fasting is just fasting our stomach from food but realistically when you're fasting you're also fasting your eyes from looking at anything haram you're fasting your ears from hearing anything haram you're fasting your tongue from saying anything haram not taking care of all your body parts could spoil your fast Umar Sulaiman would always say an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure we want to make sure that we are preventing these things before Ramadan even starts. Ramadan is supposed to be the spiritual experience that you haven't felt before, but it's really hard for that to happen if you haven't already worked on yourself prior, right? If you haven't battled and trained your nafs and really tried to stop the bad habits that are taking you away from Allah. So put in the effort beforehand and make dua. Those two right there, that is a deadly combo. Put in the effort and make dua. Do those two and inshallah you should be good. The second thing you want to do is to pray all five prayers. Everyone's journey with prayer is different, right? And I totally get that. But Ramadan really is that month in the year where you really want to push yourself, especially when it comes to salah. You want to make sure that you are not missing a single prayer this month, that you have a completely clean slate. So if you're used to praying two, three, four prayers a day, really put in an effort from now to pray all five. And if you're already praying all five, then start to get in those sunnah prayers as well. You need to also make it a point to start praying Vajid and or Aisha at the masjid, especially if you're a guy. You're already gonna be in the masjid for Aisha because of Tarawiyah. And then you really should be trying to pray Fajid in the masjid during Ramadan. So starting those from now are going to make it easier once Ramadan comes. I remember one Ramadan in particular where because we would go and pray Tarawiyah every single night, after Ramadan, I was already so used to going to the masjid for Aisha that I was able to keep that habit, right? Almost every day after Ramadan, I would go to the masjid for Aisha. And so Ramadan actually helped me kind of start that habit. And it's something that is really important, especially if you understand the reward of it. The Prophet Sallallahu told us that whoever prays Fajr in Jama'ah at the masjid, right? it'll count as if he has prayed half of the night in prayer. And then if you also pray Aisha at the masjid, it counts as the other half. So if you're able to pray Fajr and Aisha, at the masjid, it will be the same reward as if you prayed the entire night. The third thing you wanna do is read some Quran every single day. Obviously, one of the most common goals during Ramadan is to complete a khatm, right? To read the entire Quran. Some people do two, three, five, ten khatms, mashallah. And we're all going to be busy with work, school, family, all these other responsibilities. So don't let your Quran slip through the cracks. You need to make it a priority from now because it is one of the most important important things to do in Ramadan. So find times now where you can read some Quran so that you're used to it when Ramadan comes around. Because reading Quran, especially in Ramadan, is one of the biggest ROIs that you can do. If you didn't know the reward that you get for reading Quran, 
I mean every single letter, not word, but letter that you recite is 10 hasana. So for me to say Qul huwa Allahu ahad, which I think is about 12 letters, that is 120 hasana. Just by saying Qul huwa Allahu ahad. And then in Ramadan, everything is multiplied. So we could be talking about thousands of hasana from saying Qul huwa Allahu ahad. So now imagine reading an entire page or an entire juz or the entire Quran. That is billions, billions of hasanat. So make sure you're prioritizing reading Quran from now. You do not want to miss out on that reward. The fourth thing we can do is to fast Mondays and Thursdays. Obviously, as we know, you kind of have to fast all 30 days of Ramadan. And one of the best things you can do to prepare is by fasting before Ramadan. So that way your body is already accustomed to it. The Prophet would fast in Sha'ban, which is the month right before for Ramadan, you would fast in this month more than any other month, not including Ramadan, of course. But it just goes to show how much importance the Rasul would put on fasting before Ramadan. Never mind the incredible reward that you get from fasting. The Rasul told us that whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah, Allah will distance his face away from the hellfire for a distance of 70 years. And this isn't even a fast in Ramadan. This is just a normal sunnah fast. Allah also told us that every deed of the son of Adam is for him except for fasting. That fasting is for me and I will reward for it. So Allah is saying that your reward for fasting is kept with him and he will reward accordingly on the day of judgment. One thing you can do to help with this is to reach out to friends or family and encourage each other to fast together. If you send a message to your group chat saying, who wants to fast with me on Mondays, I'm sure you'll get at least a couple people. And having that kind of brotherhood or having those people with you is going to make it a lot easier than just doing it alone. The fifth and final thing that you need to do is to be disciplined in your sleep schedule. If you wanna make the most out of Ramadan, you're gonna have to pray Tarawih at night. You're gonna have to wake up early to pray Qiyam and Fajr. If you are not disciplined in your sleep schedule, one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to suffer or you're not going to make the most out of Ramadan. One of those is definitely going to happen. And don't get me wrong, I understand that one of the best things about Ramadan is the post Sarawih moves with the guys late at night, grabbing some food or just hanging out. And I'm not telling you to not do, well, I kind of am telling you not to do that. <laughs> You need to find a balance, right? You need to find a balance. Ramadan really is your month to elevate your worship and to strengthen that relationship with Allah. You don't want to be socializing too much, especially if it's affecting your sleep schedule. I think what I'm mainly talking about is all those useless hours that we spend at two in the morning just watching TikToks or YouTube videos. There's more purpose and potential in Ramadan that you're really missing out on if you're just spending time doing that kind of stuff. You have to be so incredibly productive and diligent with the time that you have in Ramadan because this Ramadan could be what gets you into Jannah. You may not get another Ramadan. How many stories do we hear of people that pass away a week before Ramadan, a day before Ramadan? They thought they were going to make it. And that's why we say the dua, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Ya Allah, allow us to see Ramadan. But you need to take full, full advantage of it. This is not the month to be scrolling through TikToks. This is not the month to be spending hours on social media or on FaceTime or just hanging out with your friends, kicking it back. You need to push yourself in this month. You need to make it one of the best months of your life. You need to make sure that on the day of Eid, you can look back at the last 30 days and say, you know what? I am proud of myself and may Allah accept all the work that I did. And if you can do that, you will come out of Ramadan a change person. I can guarantee that because that's what Ramadan will do for you if you take it seriously. That is going to be it for me inshallah. I can't believe that it's really almost here. Make dua. Make dua first of all that we are able to see Ramadan and second that we are able to make the most out of Ramadan and that Allah accepts our deeds in it. Ah oh, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, that's going to be it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Assalamualaikum.